Hey guys, welcome back to the 4x2 Wagon Family Garage and today we're going to be replacing the radiator in our Jeep Wrangler. So I've got a little pinhole on the inside of my radiator. When I get out you can smell a little bit of coolant. And so now that I found the pinhole, I'm going to take this apart. I'll show you guys where the pinhole is and show you guys how to put this in. And this job shouldn't take you no more than about an hour. There's a wet spot here, wet spot there, and wet spot. And looking through my radiator fan, looks like it's coming from right there. I got a pinhole leak. Okay, so let's get started. So lucky for me, the access to the drain plug is right here on the lower part of the radiator on the passenger side. So it's basically like a little on and off valve and then I've got a hose connected to that little valve that's coming down into this jug right here. <clears throat> so once that's done draining, uh, we'll go to the next step. But while, while you're doing that, it's important to come up here and just loosen up the, the filler cap. So uh, once you let the air in here, it'll drain a little faster down below. All right, does that make sense? All right, so there are a few things you got to take off here on the top side to get to the radiator. First of all, let's go ahead and disconnect the negative post on the battery because uh, you are going to have to remove this fan and you don't want things to be kicking on and off while you're working on your radiator. Towel under the battery here, terminal, so that doesn't accidentally spark and cause something to... Next thing we're going to do is remove the upper radiator, radiator hose, the reservoir, and then we'll need to remove this upper part of this trim from the grill. And you may or may not have to take this grill off, but I'll let you know. Uh, I, as I recall, last time I did this, I didn't need to take it out, but I'll keep you guys posted on that. So just be mindful that when you uh, take this upper hose off and their lower hose, you might get some fluid coming out. So make sure you guys got a catch can or bucket down below to catch much fluid as possible. And I've got a five gallon bucket down below. And because I drain this radiator, there shouldn't be a whole lot in there. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn this and move it out of the way. So next, I'm gonna remove this return line and this thing pops right out just like this and put it off to the side. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the fan. Okay, and I think this is the only wire harness to the fan. And then you got um, one, two, three, four bolts that should, um, once you connect, disconnect that, the whole fan should just come right out. But before we get too far, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this upper uh, radiator trim piece right here. If you got one of these handy trim piece tool remover, uh, comes in really handy. off the side. All right, so now your whole radiator is pretty much exposed. Um, we're gonna take this fan off and your radiator is just right here. There's an aluminum piece right here. Then in front of it is your condenser, which you, you'll just leave it as is. Yeah, eight millimeter. And it looks like we're gonna need to remove this. And then this whole, this whole box just pops right out, just like that. Now you got a little more room to do your thing. Okay, and then while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the lower air hose. It's kind of tight in here, so I hope that you guys can see most of what I'm doing uh, on the camera. But once I remove everything, I'll show you guys exactly where the bolt is, but it's not that difficult. Okay, so let me go ahead and remove the uh, flat screwdriver, the lower radiator hose. Uh, when I put the radi lower radi radiator hose on, I put the, uh, the little clamp screw not in a very good place. So when I put this back on, it's gonna, next time, I'm gonna put it uh, on the side so that I can access this hose clamp a little easier. That's not very good thinking on my part. Okay, keep it off to the side. And hopefully um, when we put this back in, all we gotta do is replace the fluid that we lost out of the radiator and not the engine. Um, we'll need to burp this obviously, but it won't be as bad as doing a complete flush uh, like I did last time. If you guys haven't seen that flush video, I'll put a card right up here for you guys to uh, check out. Okay, so now we're ready for the eight millimeter. And like I said, there's four of these eight millimeter screws bolted to each corner of the electric fan. 
This might be a good time just to replace the fan as well. Uh, the radiator I bought at um, AutoZone for $256 with a lifetime warranty. So, and it is plastic and the, the core is aluminum. Ideally, you want to go with all aluminum if you have the, you know, the funds. But if, you, <laughs> if you're a Jew Giver like me, uh, you're going to go with whatever you can afford. And, um, and part of my build here is to keep things, you know, without spending too much money. Sure, I can go up um, and buy a $2,000 radiator if I wanted to, um, but that's not really practical for a lot of people, including myself. And especially when you buy a part like this that's got a lifetime warranty, um, you know, you can argue, arguably say, well, at least you won't have to worry about breaking down out on the trail. Well, no, I've seen aluminum, I've seen aluminum radiators break or crack on a trail uh, a few times. So, but it does do a much better job of cooling down your radiator than plastic. Okay. Okay, so um, I thought there was four screws on the radiator. I'm sorry, the, the electric fan. Uh, there's only two, two on the top and the bottom is just a kind of clips into a place down at the bottom of the radiator. So there you go. That's the electric fan. Okay, so now that we got the radiator exposed, um, I can see exactly where the leak is right here on the driver's side, right in the middle of the radiator little pinhole and that's what I was smelling is as, as the radiator heats up it gives off a kind of a sweet smell so if you guys are smelling something kind of funny and smell you know not oily it's a sweet cotton candy kind of a smell um, that is your coolant leaking so it's a really good idea to understand what each of the fluid smells like a differential for example is probably the worst that's got a different smell that I really don't like, but they all have a unique smell to it, except transmission. The transmission fluid doesn't really smell like anything. Um, burnt oil has a smell. It's got its own kind of unique smell, but radiator and differential fluid definitely has its own unique smell that you just can't mistake. Looks like we can take the radiator out without having to remove the actual grill, which is good news. So this job shouldn't take us more than literally half an hour okay so this screw is right next to <clears throat> the power steering fluid and it's a nice big bolt okay bolt number two all right let's kind of shake this and see if this comes out oh here we here it comes oh yeah okay so when you pull this thing out um, you just want to be mindful of not to yank too hard because it's attached to a few other things like your AC line AC bracket so when you pull this out just pull it out carefully actually ended up removing the upper clip on my grill uh, the bottom clip I couldn't get off because of my winch right here and I don't want to take the entire winch off to do this so uh, turns out you can just peel back the corner of the uh, the grill and you can get to the eight millimeter bolt right down here okay so got me a little eight millimeter ratchet. I think that's going to be the key to getting this guy off. So what I'm going to do is, um, so in front of this radiator, there's this plastic cover that kind of, um, kind of holds or kind of surrounds the bottom part of the radiator. If that wasn't there, I can get to this bolt and everything else so much easier. So when I put the new radiator, a radiator in, I'm going to take that plastic piece out and throw it away so that if this ever becomes a problem on the trail, uh, I can be in and out of this thing really quick and I have to fiddle fart like I'm doing right now. And once I get this thing off, I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, there's a plastic clip. Good God. Oh, okay. All right, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys exactly what I'm going to remove here. That's real pain in the butt so that we don't ever have to fight this ever again. And I find it completely unnecessary. <clears throat> okay. So this guy, uh, the radiator sits, sits right on top of here and all these trim pieces were just getting in the way of me getting access to those bolts. So now what I'm gonna do is throw it away. Oh God, now I got so much more room in here to, uh, to get the bolts where I need to get to. So now I got so much more room in here, access to those bolts would have to fiddle far with that damn plastic piece. All right, got the new radiator and now it's important to just go in here, double check, make sure um, 
you can see through this whole thing, you don't see any obvious damage because these fins on the radiator is extremely sensitive. And I'm gonna compare the new one with the old one, make sure all the clips and all that is, uh, is identical. And sure enough it is. So on the old radiator hose, on old radiator, uh, you're gonna to wanna to take off a couple things, the radiator cap, and then these rubber bushings back here on the mount, you wanna reuse those rubber bushings. Then everything else you can throw away. And again, just be very careful when you're handling these, uh, the new radiator, especially on the fence. Okay, so there we go. Let's go ahead and drop in our new one and rock and roll. And this is where you, you just wanna take your time. You don't force anything. Just let the, basically the gravity um, slowly drop into its place. Once the condenser lines up, then Boy, I think we're gonna be rocking and rolling. All right guys, so we got the radiator in there. We got both the upper bolts in. Uh, the lower, lower bracket just basically kind of hangs on uh, by a clip on the frame. And then the, we got the fan installed and there's two bolts that goes on the very top. And then I, I'm missing the two bottom ones, so I'll be replacing that here tomorrow. But what I really wanna show you guys is that, um, and I would highly recommend, I was gonna do this last time, but I didn't. Um, just because I want to kind of keep the engine compartment clean and whatever. Well, that's never going to happen. So this piece right here is just on the very bottom of the radiator. Um, it's basically just keep the debris from coming up. But, <clears throat> you know, it's pretty well protected anyways from rocks. And I don't think you're going to damage the bottom regardless. This is not very protective. Just a piece of really thin plastic. I would highly recommend taking this thing out. If you're doing this job, take this out and throw it away. Because uh, if you ever have to do or replace this on a trail, the last thing you want to do is fit a fart with this little plastic piece. Uh, and then you got these two outer plastic pieces that goes on each side of that. And then these little clips that clips onto, uh, onto the radiator. And so if it's dark out or whatever, the uh, last thing you want to do is have to fit a fart with these little trim pieces. So if you guys are doing this job, I would highly recommend getting rid of this. <clears throat> And now by doing that, you can access the front of the radiator without taking the grill off at all. All the bolts are right here. Better yet, if you ever have to do a trail repair, it's gonna be so much easier to uh, take this whole radiator out if you need to, and then get a new one in and be back on the trail sooner than later. All right, so now the only thing that's left to do uh, on here is really put the fluid in here and then bleed out the system. And if you guys um, haven't, see my video on how to bleed the radiator. I'll put a card right up here to uh, show you guys how to do that. And I think it's gonna take maybe less than three or four quarts. Um, we didn't lose a whole lot out of the engine. Uh, just some upper radiator hose, lower radiator hose, and then of course the radiator itself doesn't take that much. If you guys are replacing a radiator, I think it's a good idea to also inspect your radiator cap and get a good radiator. And I would highly recommend getting the OE uh, radiator cap not an aftermarket cap because these are uh, pressurized and I can't remember how many pounds this is. Oh, here, we, here it is, 17 pounds. And I would highly recommend getting the OE pressurized cap, not an aftermarket. <clears throat> it's just one of those things I have about aftermarket. I've had some bad luck with aftermarket caps and I've gone to OE ever since and never had a problem. Another quick tip here, when you're filling up the radiator, I like to actually elevate the front of my Jeep up a little bit and then on an angle, it helps to burp the system a little easier. Okay, so the reason why I like to tip it on an angle is because uh, when it's flat, it tends to bubble up as it's traveling down the radiator. And by keeping it on an angle, it just flows a little easier. Just from experience, it tends to uh, create less dead spot or a bubble spot in the line. And you can kind of hear the, the bubbles, their bubbles. And again, by keeping it on an angle like this, it tends to uh, create less bubbles in the radiator, making this burping process a whole lot easier. Wow, I took the whole five quart, I'm really surprised. 
Okay, let's grab the, another bottle. And then one of the things um, I like to do, uh, once I get done here, I'm gonna take a Sharpie right on the top of the radiator where I bought this from because this thing has a lifetime warranty. So we got fluid still in the funnel right here. I'm gonna go ahead and start it up. Then when I, and then I'm gonna turn the heater on and uh, that, that should open up the heater core and just kind of cycle the, the fluid through. Oh yeah, I gotta put the battery back on. Okay, just double check, make sure everything is on here. The upper hose is on. So right now I'm squeezing the bottom radiator hose just to try to get the air bubble out. Awesome, I think this thing is pretty well burped out already, honestly. Okay, let me go start it up. You're gonna hear a little click to the engine. It's gonna suck all the coolant through the heater core and it's going right now, there it goes. And then once all the coolant is out of the funnel, I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. I'm gonna keep my engine kind of tilted like this for a little bit, let it run. Okay, I'm gonna go rub the engine up a little bit. There you go, you can see it bubbling out. So that's what I mean by burping. I'm gonna make sure you get all the bubbles out because if you don't, your car's gonna overheat. So let me go back and do that again. Having the Jeep tilted on the side definitely helps with that burping because it allows the bubble to uh, use the gravity. And because this radiator cap is the highest point, so by, because it's tilted up, it allows the, the air bubbles to rise to the top much easier. Okay, I'm gonna go rub it up again. Okay, I think she's uh, burped out pretty good, you guys. She's plenty hot. Let me do that one more time. There we go, look at that, okay. So that's good. And then last thing, uh, you wanna make sure that your, your reservoir over here is filled up to the appropriate level and you're good to go. That's it. The last thing we gotta do is uh, take this, take this uh, for a drive and make sure there's no leak.